I'm hard pressed to see how we're not at 100K by the end of calendar 2024. And I think this cycle takes us to two, three, you know, 200 or 300K. Um, you know, and, and maybe at that point in time, we're, we're a little overbought and, you know, we come back around, come back down a bit. Well, I don't think anybody's missed the boat. I mean, I think we're still very much in the early days and it's going to 10X and that's going to 10X again. So, I mean, from an investing point of view, um, you know, you don't want to miss something that's going to go up 100X and, and you know, maybe 1,000X if you, you know, talk 15, 20 years out. Popular investment manager and sound money advocate Lawrence Leopard has one of the most bullish predictions for Bitcoin, the world's leading cryptocurrency by market cap. Larry, as he is popularly known, not only agrees with Michael Saylor that Bitcoin will someday hit a staggering $8 million per coin in the near future, but he also believes the massive gains will continue until Bitcoin's price is at least a thousand times higher than it is today. Larry's confidence in Bitcoin stems from what he and other sound money advocates describe as the impending inevitable collapse of the debt-based financial system, as well as Bitcoin's many important fundamentals that set it apart from anything the world has ever seen. Larry is especially fascinated by Bitcoin's network effect. In a recent post on social media platform X, he stated, Bitcoin's gold-like store of value is the use case, but it's much, much better than that because there is a growing network effect. As the adoption takes place and the network becomes more valuable, it is a once in a millennium opportunity. Incredible, really. I have never seen a more asymmetric opportunity. People who miss it will experience massive regret. In another post responding to a gold bug questioning Bitcoin store, a value and medium of exchange use case, Larry wrote, it is the soundest form of money ever invented, full stop. The soundest form of money always wins. It has superior store of value properties. The network effect, Metcalf's law, is going to drive it to prices you cannot even imagine. In a recent interview with Jamie Curry on the Crypto Nutshell channel, Larry shared a series of super bullish price predictions for Bitcoin and explained why he is so confident about the leading cryptocurrency. The major thing that you want to look for in the venture capital business is you, you know, and, and um, Gene Kleiner was the guy who told me, told me this or told it, not me, but he told it to, you know, people he wrote about it is, is what he called dogs eating the food. Um, you want to, you want to look for, you know, something that is being used and there are more people using it every day. Okay. You want to look for obvious growth trends. And, and if you see an obvious growth trend, you know, it, it, then you can extrapolate it out and say, you know, if something is growing, it, all things, all other things being equal, it's going to continue to grow. And like, you know, one of my big winners in the internet space was a company called Netcom, which we put like $5 million into at a $15 million valuation. It got sold to AOL for, I don't know, 280 million bucks or something. I mean, we Man. made, you know, $100 million. That's something that was crazy. Um, and, you know, when we were into Netcom, it was it was a dial-up service in the Silicon Valley. And, and the guy, you know, the guy started it out of his garage and he had people literally just dialing into his server, which was then connected to a bigger server, which then talked to the internet. And he was charging him 20 bucks a month. And, you know, when I filed the guy, I don't, I can't remember the exact numbers, but he had, you know, 500 subscribers, but he was adding 150 every month and the, the 150 was going up. And so it was kind of <laughs> like, holy shit. You know, and before we know, I mean, by the time he was done, he had 200,000 subscribers. So, you know, that kind of growth is just, that's, that's evidence that something's working. And you're seeing the same thing going on in Bitcoin, by the way, right? I mean, there's just yep. enormous, you know, adoption and growth and, and increased users and ETFs are bringing all that. Let me tell you about a couple that I missed, all right? Um, so Amazon comes along and Google comes along. And and so and when I started my own fund, the first thing I did was, I was like, okay, I'm going to start looking for growth at a reasonable price. And I and I found it in India. I, we were doing cell phone providers that were growing 40% a year and trading at three times earnings. So that worked. Okay. Um, but I was looking in the U.S. as well. And I, and I saw that Amazon was growing. And I also saw that Google was growing. But in both cases, particularly the, in the Amazon case, they weren't making any money. And so I was putting my old uh, finance lens on it and saying, well, yeah, it's growing, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're growing revenues, but they're, you know, they're making it up and, and losing money and making it up in volume. And, um, and they were able to do it because of ZERP. Okay. You know, they, in other words, their cost of capital was incredibly low. I mean, Jeff Bezos basically destroyed middle and mainstream main, main Street American retailers because he had no cost of capital. And so he could, you know, and he went around buying, you know, 
He paid tons of money for warehouses and warehouse picking and all that. He could foresee where we were going, and he didn't have any cost of capital. It was stunning. And, and, but he wasn't making any money. And what I didn't realize is he was running the old monopolist play, which is to lose all the money until, lose money until you've got a monopoly, and then you can increase your prices and make a ton of money. And so I, I didn't realize that that was the game he was playing. And so I, you know, I thought it was a flawed strategy, and so I didn't invest in it, and I, I deeply regret that. The one with Google was similar, but it wasn't. They weren't doing it so much on free capital. What I couldn't understand about Google was I used Google, but I never clicked through on the ads. But I thought to myself, how does this? You know, this doesn't make sense. I mean, these these ad people are getting duped. I mean, they're they're paying a ton <laughs> of money to put ad on Google and to get placements on Google, but it's not working. Now I was wrong about that, but but because of that, I couldn't see it. But they were both very similar kind of network businesses that got more valuable as more users joined. Okay. So I'm not going to make the mistake, you know, a third time. So when I saw Bitcoin and I realized what it was, it was a network of money and it was growing, you know, steadily and exponentially um, and that everyone needs money uh, and that it is, you know, truly the best form of sound money. I mean, as, as Saylor and Preston have said recently, there's no deflection in it. You know, there's just 21 million of them and that's it. Um, you know, it's it's just to me, it's it's such an obvious, clear bet. And, you know, you said um, price predictions. I mean, I, you know, I have no idea where it's going tomorrow or I don't, I don't know where it's going to be at the end of the year, although I, I, I mean, I'm guessing maybe 100K or something. But, you know, I'm, I'm absolutely certain this is going to be 200K and then someday it's going to be a million, someday it's going to be 2 million, someday it's going to be 8 million per coin. I'm talking that because that's just the, that's just the natural progression of, you know, the growth of a, of a network. That's why I mean, I mean, I, I, I'm pounding the table just to, you know, and, and people getting into today think, well, I'm paying too much. I mean, I have a friend who's very, very wealthy. And, you know, he knows my average cost is quite low. And, you know, he just can't bear to pay 60 or 70 grand. I said, look, you, you, you know, it doesn't matter. I mean, I paid, you know, I don't know, whatever I paid. I mean, in the thousands for probably as an average. Um, but, you know, Max Kaiser was paying $2. And, and I, you know, I don't regret Max. You know, I, I mean, I just recognize that, you know, I mean, someday what I, you know, my average cost is going to seem incredibly cheap to somebody who's paying $2 million a coin. So it, it's just, it, you know, it, it's it's Sailor's point. I mean, it's going up forever, Laura. You can either decide, you know, I mean, you, you can, you're going to buy it eventually. People don't realize that. Everybody's going to buy this eventually. I don't think anyone realizes, or I don't think a lot of people realize that. So you might as well buy it now versus waiting and having to pay a lot more for it in the future. Bitcoin is a strange beast. And predicting the price moves day to day, week to week, month to month, who the hell knows? It, it surprises you almost, at least in my experience. I've been watching for a long time. Um, you know, I just dollar cost average and hodl. Uh, I don't sell. So, um, you know, uh, the ETFs are an enormous positive development. They really are. They give a lot of money access to the asset. And, 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 you know, even, even today, I mean, the assets, I mean, I think it's down, it was down to 60, high fifties, 60, you know, look, it's still up, you know, I don't know, 40% for the year. I mean, it's, it's, it's not like it's a, you know, it's not like a disaster. I mean, a year ago, this was 30 and a year, half a year before that it was 16. So, you know, it's still kind of working and, and it's going to continue to work. And so, um, you know, I, I think the short term swings aren't that relevant. I mean, you know, I, I don't know why the price is where it is, where it is today. I, I don't really watch that sort of stuff that much. I mean, certainly the Mt. Gox coins are a possibility. I would think, you know, I, I've noticed there've been also been a lot of hedge funds that are short. It, I think they're going to get their faces ripped off. Um, I also think that um, one explanation that was given to me, and I think this might make some sense, is that, um, you know, the halving just occurred not that far ago, a couple months ago, and the miners, um, their reward was cut in half, and some of them had Bitcoin on their balance sheets, and some of them probably aren't making much money right now or having cash flow issues, and so I think the miners are probably in a situation where the marginal ones are having to sell the coins they've got to keep the lights on. And they're just hoping that the price is going to go higher, but it hasn't yet. And, you know, and, and we saw the hash rate dip a bit, not not hugely, but somewhat. Um, I would have thought it would have gone down more. And and I get I'm guessing that there are probably some miners that are operating uneconomically right now that haven't quite thrown in the towel yet. They're leaving they're turning they're leaving the machines on because they're thinking, well, it's going to come back up. And until we get kind of that capitulation and they say, oh, f you know, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm turning these machines off. Um, hash goes down a bit more, and uh, and then at that point in time, you know, I mean, it's it can come out of the blue. I mean, we all know how this thing happens. I mean, the thing that's so wild about this asset is the way that it can really move and move fast. And that's why I say, I like the hedge funds that are short this stuff, 
they're about to have a deeply religious experience. I mean, they don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand that this shit can go up, you know, 50, 100, 150% in months, you know? And, and, and so, I mean, you're going to see those shorts are going to get covered so goddamn fast. And, you know, and so I'm kind of, I mean, I know Samson, I really like him a lot. He says a billion, you know, within a year. I sure hope he's right. I don't think he is, but, um, you know, I'm I, I'm hard pressed to see how we're not at 100k by the end of calendar 2024, and I think this cycle takes us to two, three, you know, 200 or 300k. 